Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to be having a look at the Nixius Fusion XS and it's going to be sort of a broader examination of how to choose a network media player if you are in the market for one. Now with all these network media players, there's a ton of different features when you're shopping around for them that can get kind of confusing. So you've got all these different processors, all these different operating systems that are running on them, as well as a wide variety of different inputs and outputs. So the first thing you want to do is look at your media library and figure out what kind of file formats you want to play. Does the media player support HD? Do you have HD files you need to play? Does it support RMVB? That's a very popular one that some of the older media players didn't support. Now, when you get into the hardware side, that's just pretty much speed and then the connectivity that you require. Most of them have HDMI out, including an audio stream, and so as long as you have a receiver or an HDTV, you should be pretty much good to go on that side. Then we get into the software. Software gets more complicated. Some of them are running modified Linux OSs. Some of them are running fairly custom OSs. This particular one is actually running Android 2.2. So along with Android 2.2, we get some cool features. For example, it's an open platform, which means that Nixius is certainly hoping that developers will step up and start to develop custom apps for it. But right now, they are actually working on their own as well. It also means that we get a fully fledged Google Chrome browser built in. So in this case, we're using the Google Chrome browser in order to discover that wikipedia.org, one of the few pages that they still seem to have online today, is the one about SOPA, the Stop Online Piracy Act. So in addition to this particular feature, we do have all the media playing options as well. So that means we can view our various files, navigate them, including both as a file structure and then also using their custom little app, which I'll show you in a minute. Now let's take a closer look at the unit itself. It's a very small box, so it fits comfortably in even a small sized hand. On the back of the unit, you've got your power, ethernet, two USB ports, HDMI, optical audio out, in case you don't have a receiver that supports HDMI audio. Uh, you've also got an AV out port that breaks out with an included cable, as well as an on-off switch. Ventilation holes are located on the bottom of the unit so that it doesn't get too warm while it's operating. Now the unit itself is important, but obviously if you're shopping for a media player, you're going to want to take a close look at the remote. This one doesn't have my favorite remote out of all the ones that I've used in the past, but it's pretty serviceable and it is fairly large with a wide variety of buttons. I do like to see a QWERTY keyboard, but like I said before, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't have it. So let's delve into the software a little bit more and I just want to show you guys some of the stuff it comes with by default. So you've got your web browser, this is your folder based navigation. You've also got YouTube and Facebook that are functional as far as we've tested so far. Picasa applications and it's worth it to go in here and have a look at that because it only comes with a couple of pre-installed applications including a file manager as well as an additional video player application. You can go on the market and it looks like most of the apps available on the market right now are not necessarily geared towards the English speaking um, markets. However, we go up to shows, you're going to see something consistent here as well. This allows us to find uh, shows that are archived and can be streamed online. USA we can't access because we're in Canada. But I did go to this one and it turns out it's just uh, YouTube streams of various shows. So they just bring it all together for you so you can conveniently access it. So anyway, like I was saying, I would expect support on that to improve moving forward. We're still using very... Oh, sorry. We're still using very early firmware on this product, although you can see the interface is fairly snappy. Finally, we get down to settings, which are fairly mundane, and we get into the jukebox. So this is kind of a cool app that it does come with. And you can use this to navigate based on just alphabetical order, and you can see your cover art. Once you have a closer look, actually the only one that, <laughs> we've kind of faked this a little bit, because the only one that actually has a video file associated with it is 10,000 BC. So once we click on that one, we can see a bunch of additional information about it. And we can't play it, but we can play the trailer without any difficulty. And, oh, we can resume the video. Hold on. No, no. Yep, let's show them. Real time. This is how quickly you can actually start up a video and get it going just like that. Riveting. 
Now it's all fine and good to show you guys a trailer that may or may not be high bitrate, we don't know. So what I did is I decided to use this navigation. So these are great even if you have not very network savvy parents, for example, that you need to give them something so they can just play the file on the TV and you don't have to set up a media PC or anything like that. Because all they have to do is plug a USB drive into the back Manage to navigate to multimedia, which should be fairly straightforward. Go to the USB drive and then they can find whatever. Oh, this is the wrong one. I need to be on this one. See, I, I couldn't even do it, but whatever. They just need to find it and launch the file. So this uses a Marvel chipset and it uses QDO technology, which in theory allows it to perform very, very well, as well as improving the overall image quality. To summarize, and this is not related to QDO necessarily, but this is more related to the overall quality of the unit. I wanted to throw our birds file at it. This is an extremely high bitrate file to see if there would be any hitching, juddering, stuttering, anything like that, drop frames, and there was not. We tried it a few times just to see what would happen, and it looks like it's automatically playing the next file in the folder, but I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for checking out this episode. Featuring the Nixius Fusion XS, don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos from your favorite e-tailer, NCIX.com.